Okay, so we looked at various processes, sowing and reaping, the law of tithing, giving to your parents, giving to your prophets, giving to the needy. You have to have faith in God's written word for it to work for you. I mentioned that there are three dimensions to financial independence. The first one is what? And then number two. And then number three. Material or practical. And so we are delving into the psychological today. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. This is one of the areas where a lot more people have issues. A lot more people have issues in this area. And you are going to find out why. From the book of Luke chapter 4 verse 17 and then Luke chapter 7 verse 22, you discover that it takes more than money to make men rich. You can't get rid of poverty by giving people money. Are you here? The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to pray to God, so to the meek. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. So what's the solution for broken hearts? What? Healing. healing. Tell your neighbor, if your heart is broken, you need healing. Yeah. To proclaim liberty to the captives. What is the solution for those in captivity? Liberty. All right, and recover your sight to the blind. The solution for blind people, eh? to pray the gospel to the poor. What's the solution for poverty? The gospel. The Bible says in matter of two or three witnesses, every word is established. Jesus repeated this same thing in chapter 7. So in case, you know, somebody thought it was a slip of tongue, in another meeting he said the same thing. Give me Luke um, 7, 22. So Jesus sent them to go and tell John the things you have seen and heard that the blind see. Solution for the blindness? The lame walk. Solution for lameness? The lepers are cleansed. Solution for leprosy? Um, the deaf, yes. Solution for deafness? The dead are raised. Solution for deadness? <laughs> okay. The poor have the gospel preached to them. Solution for poverty? Eh? The same thing. So in case you thought it was a slip of tongue initially, he's repeating it again to show that he knows what he's saying. And I've read a handful of books to know that even secular authors attest to this reality. That you cannot get rid of poverty by giving people money. That's why people win lottery, big money, huge money. Within a year, they are back to where they came from. Some even go back to their ghetto after winning as much as $5 million. If it's here in Africa, you say that maybe it's ancestral. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Now, if you take all the monies in this world right now and you share it equally, to everyone. Within a year, 90% of the people will be back at the same spot where they started. Billionaires will go back to being billionaires. Broke people, most of them will go back to being broke. Only a few of the broke people will maintain the status quo. And there's a reason for that. That's to show you that it takes more than money to make people rich. So poverty is not the absence of money. That's why the first place to start is not struggling to make money. That's why people struggle and struggle and struggle. It's like the difference between two people who are given an assignment to cut down a tree. And they are both giving cutlass. And one quickly rushed and began to cut and cut and cut and cut. 
It seemed like it was making progress. And then the second one picked the cutlass and then began to sharpen. Two hours he's still sharpening. Meanwhile, within that two hours, that, this other guy was already, you know, making some progress. And then when he's done sharpening, he takes his cutlass and within 30 minutes, he brings the tree down. This guy is still wrestling. After four hours, he's still wrestling. That's to show you that it's not so much about effort. Effort that is powered with the wrong mindset can produce the right result. It will only produce more frustration, more struggle. There is a mindset that produces the poverty. Are you here? Yes, sir. There is a mindset that produces the lack. If that mindset is not cured or altered or changed, no matter how much you give that individual, he will still come back to being poor. About 20 years ago, a friend of mine suddenly showed up in my office. I haven't seen him maybe in about four years or so. So, and he was looking, you know, a bit fresh. Uh, where have you been? Oh, you know, life, blah, blah, business. And then he said he needed me to give him a loan. I said, for what? Why? He said he wanted to quickly execute some things and blah, blah, blah. I just said, what's been happening all these years? He said that he would like to make a confession, but he knows he w I wouldn't like what he's going to say, but that's just the truth. That about a year before then, he made in one business 14 million naira. This was 20 years ago. It's not the same 14 million naira today. I mean, you are talking about maybe probably times eight or so. Talking about almost 100 million naira. That he made 40 million naira. I said, how? And he told me how, so I believed him. Because, you know, the person who gave him the contract was a minister of the Federal Republic. And then it's somebody I know, it's somebody he also knew. So the person gave him a contract and they made a whooping 40 million naira. I said, okay, so what's happening that you are coming to ask me? He said, well, that, um, that that's the problem that, you know, he thought the contract would keep coming. So when he made the money, he went to a particular, you know, very big furniture company and then bought brand new furniture for his house and for his office. Brand new flat screen everywhere. Black. So he was talking, I was, okay, okay. If not that we are friends, I'll have told him if I close my eyes <laughs> and you are, I'll open it and you are still here. Praise the name of Jesus. So I asked him, I said, so it is when the money got exhausted, you remember me? Oh yeah. And you know the sad reality, I've not been in touch with him on a close time since then. But I've been in touch, you know, somehow from afar. 20 years ago, it's not recovered. Money don't make people rich. Can give you many other examples. Are you here? <laughs> Money don't make people rich. If the mindset that produced the lack in the first place is not altered, That's the first thing. And that's what this particular section is about. So tonight is just introduction. That's to show you that if you miss tomorrow or next or the rest, it means that you have a covenant with certain things. And we have to send you to certain places for breaking of the covenant. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. In Mark chapter 4 verse 14, Jesus said, made a simple statement. He said, the sower sows the word. The first seed that will produce the significant force permanent lasting turnaround in your life is the seed of the word. Relevant word, not just general word. A relevant word. Word that is applicable 
to what you are trying to treat. Because now we are talking about finances. So don't say, Pastor said, it's the word that will change my situation. You now begin to listen to message on healing for a financial issue. You have entered the wrong flight. It's like you are going to UK, you are going to London, and then you mistakenly enter Zambia flight. And because it lasted for six hours, you believe that you are actually only to land, and then you look around, there are no white people. It's all black people like you. I want to run back inside the flight. Praise the Lord. It has to be a relevant word, word that is applicable to what we are trying to cure, what we are trying to deal with, the seed of the word. A relevant seed has to be sown in your heart to destroy every trace, every iota of poverty or lack. And that's what is going to be happening from this evening till hopefully till the series is over. There's a law, and I'm going to end with this. There's a law of seed time and harvest. And I know that in the last few days, I've spoken about that in relation to money. But I'm not talking about it now in relation to money. Not talking about it in relation to money. Because that law applies to everything. Applies not just to money. It's an empirical law that God put in place in Genesis chapter 8, verse 22. In fact, it actually predates Genesis 8, 22. As you will find in Genesis 1. Genesis chapter 1, verse 11. Then God said, let the land sprout with vegetation. Every sort of seed-bearing plant and trees that grow seed-bearing fruit. These seeds will then produce the kinds of plants and trees from which they came. Are you here? Every seed produces after its kind. Verse 12. The lamb produced vegetation, all sorts of seed-bearing plants and trees with seed-bearing fruit. Their seeds produce plants and trees of the same kind. And God saw that it was good. Their seeds produce plants and trees of the same kind. Every seed produces after its kind. Their seeds produce plants and trees of the same kind. I know the reason why I'm emphasizing on this. You see, you can't plant cassava in your mind or your head and expect to reap apple. It violates divine law. Every seed must produce after its kind. And the Bible says, and their seeds produce plants and trees of the same kind. So whatever plant and seeds you are seeing in your financial experience today tells you the kind of seed that you have planted consciously or unconsciously repeatedly over the years. Because every seed must produce after its own kind. So the plant you are seeing right now is a product of the seeds that have been planted repeatedly. If you then do not like the plants or the fruits you are eating from the plant, what do you do then? You have to now begin to plant a new kind of seed for a different kind of harvest. Are you here? Yes, sir. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. This is not preaching, this is teaching. So which tells you to a great extent that your financial independence is predictable. Which also tells you one thing, that to an extent, listen, listen to this. It is not actually in God's hand, whether you are rich or poor. Uh, 
you don't seem to agree. Okay, how come you are poor? I'm not talking to everybody. Oh, yes. How come you are not as rich as you want to be? Does it mean God doesn't love you? Does it mean God is discriminating against you? If it were in God's hand, whether you are rich or poor, God will make everyone under the sound of my voice a billionaire in dollars. Because God loves you. He loves you to the point where he gave his son. Most precious gift. So what is money? But you see, his own part is to set certain things in motion that would guarantee your wealth if you will observe and put them to work. Now, if you don't put them to work, just like salvation, Romans 5 tells us that Jesus, you know, has paid the price for every single sinner, including the most despicable sinner on earth, including, what are their names now? We don't really have very popular terrorists anymore. Most of them have been eliminated. But whoever, wherever, including that terrorist that, that has killed thousands of people, Jesus paid in full for his salvation. Now, does it mean that everyone will go to heaven? No. Huh? No. Not everyone. It is those who activate what Jesus has paid for. The same thing with wealth. If it was in God's hand to make everyone rich, everyone will be rich. But he has put the laws in motion. Ours is to activate it. So we tell me right now, in the next three years, if you are still the same person you are today financially, it means you are disobedient or you are not in these meetings. In fact, for many of you, if in the next six months you are still at the same level financially that you are today, it means that you are not angry enough to put the word to work for you. That's all. That's all. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 22. It says, then God blessed them, saying, be fruitful and multiply, and let the fish fill the seas, and let the best multiply on the earth. Verse 25, God made all sort of wild animals, livestock, small animals, each able to produce offspring of the same kind, and God saw that it was good. Emphasis on producing offspring of the same kind. Just like seeds or plants you are made to produce after their own kind. So anything you plant in your heart will produce after its kind. You can't plant tomato in your mind or in your heart and then wonder how come it's tomato you are always reaping. If you don't like the tomato, then you have to talk to the seed. You have to change the kind of seed, the kind and the quality of seed. So it means that if you begin to plant a different seed from today, you can predict what will happen to you in the next one year. Are you here? Yes, sir. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let me just say a few things as we wrap up. So God said that every seed shall produce the kinds of plant and trees from which they came from. Apple seed cannot produce mango trees. And crocodiles don't give birth to scorpions. Is that true? Yes. Yeah. Crocodiles don't give birth to scorpions. It violates divine order. So you can't plant, you can't have negativity in your subconscious. Or you can't have poverty or lack in your subconscious and expect that your struggle will change the physical reality. It has to be altered first. And that's what we are going to be doing to alter, to uproot those 
those things that have been planted and plant new seeds that you will now have responsibility of nurturing over time and you will watch and see new things grow. It's called the law of seed time and harvest. Today's harvest was simply yesterday's seed. Tomorrow's harvest will be today's seed. So instead of complaining about yesterday, start planning for tomorrow. Glory to Jesus. Thoughts are seeds. Conditions are harvest. Are you here? Thoughts are seeds. And then the condition that come afterwards are the harvest. So any condition you are reaping or you are seeing consistently is an indication of the thoughts you have been nursing, either consciously or unconsciously. You will always get out of life what you put into it. If you sow the right causes, you will reap that effect. So thoughts are seed, conditions are harvest. Change the quality of your thinking, you will change the quality of your life. Scripture says in Proverbs 23, 7, as he thinketh in his heart. So what? So what? You can't alter the scripture. As you think it in your heart. So in case you are unsure about your dominant thoughts over the years, check out your dominant experiences. It will give you a perfect idea of your dominant thought. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I remember one of the testimonies, you know, somebody shared when I, I was speaking on this two years ago. He said, when I was talking about poverty mindset and self-sabotaging thoughts, that she said to herself, well, um, this, this is not exactly my problem uh, because I don't have poverty mindset. He said, until I began to break it down, began to give examples, and it clicked. And she left the meeting that day understanding what the issue has been. And what followed afterwards was an ending cycle of increase. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 6, verse 43 and 44. It says, a good tree can't produce bad fruit. And a bad tree can't produce good fruit. A tree is identified by its fruits. Are you here? Yes, Tell your neighbor, a tree is identified by its fruit. Which means that your financial health is a reflection of your mental health. Your financial health is a reflection of how you've been thinking, how you've been programmed. Consciously or unconsciously. In fact, most of the programming are unconscious. 80% are unconscious. The things you saw growing up, the way you were treated, the things you heard repeatedly, right? Um, you know, all kinds of stuff, stuff like money don't grow on trees. Um, you know those things that parents and older people say to try to justify certain position. And they say it repeatedly, but unconsciously it is sowing seeds in the mind of the average person. And then over time, they grow up with a certain mentality. That's why the rich keeps getting richer. Jesus said it in Luke chapter 19. He said, to the man who had one talent. He said, take it and give it to the man who had ten. And the people protested. And he said, listen, to him who has, more will be given. And the man who doesn't have, even what he has, will be taken away. You know why? The rich have a consciousness of wealth. That's why Donald Trump, for instance, I mean, I've been following his story for as far back as 25, 30 years ago. I have maybe about four of his books. The guy has gone bankrupt up to three times. But every time he bounced back up, 
You can't keep a rich man down if he's rich here. No matter what you take from him. What he has inside, upstairs, take everything from him. He will get back up. As he is right now, take everything, strip him down to zero. Give him five years. All those things will come back. It's not magical. Praise the name of In fact, it's scriptural. The poor gets poorer. Why? Your mindset. Your mindset. The rich gets richer. Your mindset. The reason why someone will be will find it difficult to give to God, for instance, is a poverty mentality. It's a poverty mindset. Because he believes that if I give, I lack. Contrary to what the scripture says. A rich man doesn't operate with that mentality. In fact, don't talk lack in the presence of a wealthy man. If you want to keep associating with them. They cut you off completely. If they sense that lack mentality. Because like Solomon said in Proverbs chapter 4. They guard their minds with all diligence. No corruption. And now I'm not even talking about believers. Believers, unbelievers, at a certain level, there are certain discussions you can't engage them with. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So how do you develop that mindset that will give you that transition from where you are to where you plan to be? Because we are all at different levels under the sound of my voice. There are some of you, where you are right now, that you are trying to transition to another level. There's somebody else who is envying you. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. But the equation is balanced. To transition from wherever you are to the next phase, there has to be a change in the way you think. There has to be a change in what is deposited already inside you. There has to be a change. You cannot solve a problem at the same level where that problem is. You have to move higher. You have to operate at a higher level of understanding. So if you are struggling and, you know, like I said, there are three levels. There are three dimensions, spiritual, psychological, and then material. Most people attack the material first, the physical, struggling in their business, trying to push harder in their business. No matter how hard you push in the wrong direction, it cannot lead you to the right direction. It can't. So what if you take a moment to begin to alter the consciousness that is producing your present state of result. By taking some of the scriptures we've been studying the last few weeks and then meditating on them. This is one of the ways you alter the programming. Meditating on the word. One of the most effective ways to alter what is being programmed. And this, you know, regardless of which area, not just financially, any other area. One of the ways, one of the strongest ways to alter programming is by meditation. That's why Paul said, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. If your mind is not renewed, you cannot be transformed. And your mind is not renewed just by reading. It's by meditating. You chew on it. You ponder over it. And then you say it. For how long? For as long as it takes for you to see result. And even when you see result, you should be smart enough to keep at it. Because some people saw results 
they stopped. They kept seeing results for a while. And after a while, the results ceased. Because unconsciously, they reverted back over time to the former state of mind. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. You see, they say if you want to catch a monkey, you think like a monkey. Right? If you want to operate at a certain dimension of wealth, you have to think. You have to think like that. So there are some things people say. You can tell where they are. You can tell where they are. In fact, your words locate you. I encourage education, and, and you know we do that a lot. We even sponsor, you know, some people in the academics. But listen, paper qualification alone cannot make anybody rich. Yes, it can, it can get you a job that can, you know, give you some level of comfort, but it cannot make you rich. It can't. As important as it is. 